In this video, I'll be installing AccuSQL 2014, opening it up to a native tutoring sample database, and then I'll create a blank database in SQL Server. Okay, so you may have a USB key or a DVD, or you may have copied the media to a folder, but what you're looking for here is AccuSQL.exe. This is the launcher for the installations of the product. So when I open that, I have some options available here. Uh, now, if you have the software, if you purchased it, what you'll see when you click on an item, for example, a uh, computer lab plugin, is the installer for that product. If you don't have the product and you click on it, then you'll see videos, PowerPoints, more information about the product. Real briefly here, a uh, computer lab plugin, that's used to make every computer in a computer lab its own sign-in station. The computer would be in a locked state. The student would enter their ID to unlock it, use that lab PC, and then sign out or be signed out, and it would go back to a locked state and wait for the next student to unlock it. Uh, Web Gateway, formerly known as AccuSL uh, for Silverlight, is used for web-based appointment scheduling and seminar registrations. So, for example, a student wouldn't have to walk all the way to your tutoring center in order to uh, create an appointment through AccuSQL they would do it via the web browser from, say, their dorm room. Okay, but for this video, I'm going to go ahead and install AccuSQL, and I have various links here, but what I'm looking for is install AccuSQL 2014. So I'll click on that. That will begin the program launcher, or the installer, I should say. Okay, and I'll click Next, Next again, and read the license agreement. Once I've read that, I'll click I accept, click next, and I can enter my information here if I'd like to. I'd recommend leaving the default for installing for anyone who uses the computer. I'll click next, and I'll let it install to its default path here. Click next again, and then install. Okay, and that'll start the program installer. Now, by the way, AccuSQL comes with three different databases, uh, a tutoring sample database, an advising sample database, and a blank database. Okay, now you can use the tutoring sample uh, to learn the software, see how the various features work, and you can even run that without uh, transferring the database to SQL Server. You can run it in what we call native mode. Uh, when you open the program the first time, it will be in native mode, and it will be pointing to a tutoring sample database. Okay, so you can learn the program that way, but ultimately you're going to want to transfer a blank database over to SQL Server, and I'll show you that in a moment. Now you would install AccuSQL on the various computers that will be using it, so uh, your various sign-in stations would have it installed, uh, the administrators that are going to be setting up the back end of the program, um, or any faculty that may want to run reports with AccuSQL. You would install it on each of those computers. Okay, so I'll click Finish, and now I can exit the installer here. Okay, and you'll notice I have a shortcut to AccuSQL on my desktop. I also have a program group for AccuSQL 2014 right here. And that includes uh, AccuSQL 2014, a link to our support pages online, and then AccuBuzz. What that's used for is to notify uh, advisors or tutors when students sign in to see them. And, and we have videos out on our YouTube channel for that. Okay, but I'll go ahead and open AccuSQL 2014. Now, you'll notice the first time I open it here, it's going to copy some files out to its public folder. Okay, so it's going to uh, transfer the tutoring sample database out to that public folder, but more importantly, it's going to write a file that we need for it to run called dbparam, uh, the parameters to the path to the database. Okay, so I'll log in the first time. It's going to be nine ones, and the default password is all caps new, N-E-W, and it'll tell me that I'm using the default uh, ID and password. I can certainly change that once I've logged in but I'll click OK. Okay, now I'm going to click on Database, and you'll notice here down below it says I am not connected to a SQL Server database. Okay, that means I'm in native file-based mode, if you will. Okay, so I'll click on Database, and then Database Location, and I am in native mode, and I can see where I'm pointing right here by looking at my database folder, and it is indeed my tutoring sample out on my public folder. 
Okay, but what I want to do now is create a blank database out in my SQL Server. So I'll click the link right here, create blank SQL Server database. And I'll put in my server information. Now, if you're using your own port, you would put a comma uh, with the port number. If you're using the default 1433, you wouldn't need to put the port. Okay, you will need sys administrator privileges in order to create the database. And here you enter the database name. Now, there are various client drivers available, and I want to pick one that I know is not installed just to show you what happens. So I'm going to click uh, the client 11 and click test connection. Now, if you see a message like this when you try to connect to the database, that means you don't have a client driver installed or you've picked the wrong client driver. Okay, so what I can do is go out to my folder where AccuSQL is installed. which is program files or program files x86 AccuSQL 2014. In that folder, I have another folder here called SQL drivers. So when I click on that, I have the SQL native client driver that I would need to install if I didn't already have it installed. And it comes with a 32-bit or 64-bit version. So you would install whichever one you want, or depending on the OS. Okay, and then I would connect using my SQL native client driver. So that's the generic driver that, that you would install. Okay, I happen to have a, a native 10 driver here. Okay, now when I create this database, I also have the option of creating a public account for it. So I'll click that, and I'll just use the password the same as my username here. Okay, and then I can test connection again. And once I'm happy with that, I would click Create Blank Database. And the process will begin shortly here. So what it's going to do is create the database for me. It's going to transfer all the tables over that I need and build it and get it ready for, for me to use. Okay, so that process is completed. I can click OK and close. Now I'm ready to go. I can go ahead and connect to that SQL Server database. So I'll go to my database location, SQL Server mode, and I'll enter the server information again. Now I'm using my SA uh, just so I can get a list of my databases, okay? So I'll click that and I can get a drop-down list of my databases. Okay, and I picked AccuSQL 2014 Tutoring. Now I'm going to go ahead and use my public account. And test my connection. Okay, so now I'm pointing to the AccuSQL 2014 Tutoring database using my public account. I'll go ahead and save that. Now it tells me I have to restart the program. So I have to close this and exit AccuSQL completely. and ask to back up my data, I'll say no. Okay, so now when I reopen AccuSQL now, it'll be pointing to its blank database in SQL Server mode. And I can verify that by logging in again with my ones and my new, all caps new. And now you'll notice at the bottom, it no longer says that I am in non-SQL Server mode. I am connected to a SQL Server database. And I can verify that right here, SQL Server mode. And there we go, the information we just entered. OK, now I can go look at my students, which I shouldn't have any. So I have a blank database. And now I would begin doing my database imports, importing my students, my classes, my staff members, whatever information I would like to put in AccuSQL. Okay, and we have a lot of information about importing. Uh, by the way, if you go to Database Import right here, and then you click Need Help, click here, we have lots and lots of information about database imports uh, on the web.
Okay, so all you need to do is click Need Help, click here. And that should open up a browser in a second here. Okay, and then it'll open up the window, uh, browser window that shows you uh, AccuTrack, AccuSQL import help, um, and we have information on each individual import, even sample import files. So if I wanted to learn about importing students, for example, I would click on that, and it would tell me all about the various fields and how I can do the student import. Okay? All right, one more thing I want to talk about here is in our database location, uh, click Next. Okay, you'll notice there's a shared folder. Okay, now that's not the path to the database. I'm using SQL Server for that. But what that's for is a shared path uh, that you would create a public uh, path that you would connect all your various clients to. And there are some various reasons why you would do that. Uh, I actually have a, out on our support site, explains the reasons for that. Uh, some would be uh, if you use uh, different local labs in the software and you use an intake queue, for example, um, each local lab can have its own intake queue, uh, but the public shared folder would need to be used for that. Uh, software updates, so what I mean by that is if we come out with a version 13.0.1, for example, um, that can be downloaded one time. It would be stored in the public folder and then any other client that opens it would automatically get that 13.0.1 update. Uh, if you do shared reports, so if you customize report and share it with everyone, well, that report is stored in the shared path. So long story short, I would recommend creating a shared folder out on a server. It doesn't have to be the SQL server you're using, but you would put it on a shared folder and then point the clients to it. Okay, and now I'm ready to go. Thank you.